Hey everybody, so today's video is going to be a little bit different. I um, I want to say that I, in the past two weeks or two, something like that, I took part in Ace Roller's challenge to implement a shader technique called shell texturing. So, in today's video, I'll be discussing my experiences and everything I learned during this challenge. To add some fun, I decided to adopt Ace Roller's video style, so he's talking into the mic, I'm doing the same thing here but I'm using a crayon, and I'm going to be displaying some garbage on the screen, hopefully to aid my garbage exp explanation. It's important to also understand that this video is focused on sharing my challenges and learning experiences and not providing a comprehensive overview of shell texturing. If you want to know more about that, then you should just watch Ace Roller's video. Quick disclaimer, if I make mistakes or explain things incorrectly, please correct me in the comment section. It's important to also note that when I initially tagged this challenge, I refrained from diving into code directly. So instead what I did was I attempted to implement shell texturing based on my understanding from watching the video and only then when I encountered a difficulty or some, something that was extremely hard then that I turned to looking at code. Now I highly recommend this approach for anyone essentially just learning anything new. This is just in general. So this essentially was the biggest thing that helped me understand shell texturing. Another also minor disclaimer is that I might skip over certain shader or math terms in this video and I apologize in advance if anything is unclear. Additionally, I'll be also presenting formulas in math notation which may be challenging to read. Despite my hate to math notation, I've decided to confront it for the sake of my future and reading more complex papers for the future. I will do my best in simplifying and explaining these formulas using code or just plain English. I'm just talking about it for you guys. So let's get to our first point. What is shell texturing? Essentially, it's just a shader technique used to fake depth and volume using shells and 2D textures, commonly utilized in games to simulate complex geometries like fur, hair, grass, and other dense stuff, thin objects even like carpets or vines. This method is particularly valuable for real-time rendering where optimization is critical. So, despite some compromise in visuals, it's still a very favorable trade-off as seen in recent games like Genshin Impact. However, shell texturing has some optimization issues, such as overdraw being the biggest one. Basically, it happens when you have too many layers and the Z buffer starts shitting itself. If you want to read more about this topic, just go watch Ace Roller's video where he covers overdraw because it's out of the scope for this video. So let's talk about the first step. And the first step is actually to manage our shell textures. So in my approach, the initial focus was on managing all the shell textures. Rather than immediately diving into shader code, I prioritized establishing functionality, such as layer count and height adjustments. However, I encountered my first dumb mistake relating to forgetting about using normals. It didn't pose an issue when it came with just using quads, but I knew the issue would, would come if I use spheres. So I just incorporated my normals. So. Let's quickly talk about what are normals. Normals are just vectors that are perpendicular to the, vert the vertices of a 3D model, or shells in this case, primarily used for shading and lighting calculation. Now this topic we will come to later in this video, but coming back to set the height of each shell based on the normal, one just simply has to offset the shell vertices by the normal vectors, multiplying that by the max height slash distance value that you gave it, and here comes the other height value. Um, Israel calls it the height value, but I'm gonna call it the shell index normalized value. So what is this last value? It's my garbage naming convention um, that I use to comprehend height distribution within my shells. It's basically a value that ranges from zero to one obtained through the following math expression. And you can see the code in implementation right here. But in simpler terms, it's just an index based height ranging from zero to one and you get this by dividing the index of a shell by the total number of shells. And just to wrap everything up, the purpose of the script is just to send values to our shader, with the most crucial ones being height, density, and literally it, those two. As a quick side note, um, in the future, I might use this term, uh, or I might just call this the height, and I might refer to it as the shell index normalized. Um, Again, I, I only used that naming convention because it was something that helped me understand it more. 
So coming on to the next step, since my objective was grass, we need to understand what grass is. And unfortunately, grass is something I rarely interact with. So, okay, seriously though, picture yourself at the subway enjoying a steak and cheese sandwich, glancing at the patch of grass outside. The first thing to note is that grass has random heights and varying densities, thicknesses, and etc. So, what we will be doing here is we will be just addressing the height and ignoring everything else because we are dumb. So, how do we achieve random height? We do that by noise, or a noise map. How do we get noise? Very simple, open shader toy, steal a hashing function or a noise function, whatever. And trust me, you can, you can trust me on this part because I do this fairly often. So before I even continue, I just want to say that I don't really understand exactly what happens in hashing functions, but all I can tell you is that whatever you put in a hashing function is called a seed, and everyone knows what the seed is, and it just essentially gets moved around and sometimes bit shifted in some cases to give you a random value. Now, the sole purpose of this hashing function is that we just want to get a random value that ranges from 0 to 1, although it also needs to give a value that is equally distributed. So what does that mean? Let's start off by prefacing that I am not a statistics guy, whatever, whatever, but let's just say if monster A has a drop table that contains three items, with them being, let's say, Asman Gold's hair, Acerola's mic, or $500, if the drop table says that Asmund Gold's hair has a 99% drop chance, we can confidently say that Monster A's drop table is not uniformly distributed. However, if all three items have the same drop chance that add up to 100%, in this case, each item would have a 33.3% drop chance. Now we have a uniform distribution in our drop table. So now that we addressed randomness and we use this randomness value, the first thing we're going to see in our shader is that it's going to display a single value. Now, here comes another issue that I came with specifically. Never in my life have I used an unsigned integer. I mostly just use a float when it comes to shaders and nothing else. I've never used an unsigned int in a shader. And doing so, I was wondering why my values were not magically floored until I realized that I was using float the whole time. Um, again, because I never used anything else besides float. So I was stuck in this for two hours and experienced a typical programmer brain fart moment, I guess. So quickly after fixing this dumb issue, we should see a singular color across our UV. That is because our UV ranges from 0 to 1 at the start. And integers floors all the decimals, and thus we only have one value showing, which makes sense. So in order to fix this, we simply expand our UV map by multiplying it by a scalar let's say 100, and that would make our UV range from 0 to 100. And with this done, we should see a lot of noise on each shell texture, and be ready to move on to coloring and shaping this grass. So let's address how we get our first patch of grass. So in order to get this grass shape, we have two important things already, that being the noise and the height. It's also important to say that these both are ranging from 0 to 1 and we can do a very simple check between the two and see if the height is less than the random value and if it is we output a color otherwise we discard to kill the pixel so surprisingly this is actually my first time that I heard about the discard keyword since I always just use clip before and never really anything else so coming to that my next question is to the two people that watch this video um, is it okay to use conditions in shaders? I was told that they were bad, so I never really used conditions much in shaders, so hence my unfamiliarity with the discard keyword. Um, but if you have any good insights on this with using conditions in shaders, please do tell me about it in the comment section, and yeah, thank you if you do bother typing a comment. Now that we have grass, we are presented with another issue, and it's the lack of depth when, depth when it comes to our grass it might look flat, and it is. So to address this issue, we have to just multiply it by the height value, in this case, the shell index height. And this essentially gives us a faked ambient occlusion effect, and obviously isn't real, and real AO, I'm pretty sure it's much more complicated, and is outside of the scope of this video. So now let's talk about grass thickness. So this part might be a bit complicated to explain and I'm going to apologize in advance because my initial implementation is absolute garbage. How should you do thickness? 
You should stick to Ace Roller's thickness, which is a very simple check of doing the following. If the length from the center is greater than the thickness times RNG minus height, then you just simply discard the pixel and that's done. So what hard garbage did I do? Remember that I said I used clip? Here is what I got. I compared all of this whole line to see if it's less than zero. And if it is, it dies. Now I'm going to explain what I'm doing in my thickness swamp and this whole garbage mess. So to achieve sharp grass, we need to first shave off each grass block from the center to the outer section of the block based on its length from the center to the edge. So I know that's a lot to take in, but this also needs to take into account its height for the cone shape. So this is calling for the length function. However, we can't directly do this as we have not done any implementation for this to work. So let's do it now. To get the length from the center to the edge, we need to, do, we need to have essentially two things. A centered UV that is at each grass block so we can shave each grass block. So how do we do this? First, I take the fractional component of the resized UV and this will give you repeating UVs. Then, if you want to center the UVs to the center of each grass block, you have to multiply that fractional component of the upscaled UV by 2 minus 1. This will shift everything to the center of each grass block, and then finally now you can use your length function. This is essentially applied to determine every pixel's distance from the center in each grass block. I hope that makes sense. So with this done, we have a lot, and we are essentially ready to move on. We, have, we should have circles in every block at this point, allowing us now to essentially start shaving each grass block. Let's go back to my garbage implementation, which is based on the clip function again. What if I just plug the inverse of this length in and discard it whenever it goes under zero? We see a cylinder. Now, how do we change this to a cone? We need to just simply take into account the height. So how do I do this? If you minus this length, by a offset that is based on a value that comes out from the height divided by the random number generator, we will get a cone shape. This essentially will give you that cone shape that is based on the height of the RNG value and the height itself of that particular grass block. So closing out, I also have these extra values. These thickness variables are just for controlling um, for the user to control the thickness values, essentially just moving it at certain lengths, and that's basically it. So now we move on to lighting, which is a topic that's really easy to explain. It's based off the Lambert light model, very classic. Um, calculation of just taking the dot product between the normal vector and the light direction. Doing this should give you literally light instantly. Uh, I've done this in my tracer, my ray tracer, and my tune shader. And you need to also remember that this dot product gives you a value ranging from negative to one, negative one to one, um, as the dot product does. But since negative light sounds stupid, we are going to clamp it from zero to one by saturating the dot product. After doing all of this we still have a very strong absence of light. Um, on one side, we need to fix all that extremely dark section, right? And in order to do that, we're just going to use what Valve does, which is called a half Lambert, which essentially just shifts all the values up to a range of 0.5 to one, I believe. So correct me if I'm wrong. Um, a half Lambert essentially just works by literally just taking the result of that dot product and multiplying it by 0.5 and also by adding 0.5. Doing this will give you a nice light even across the areas that shouldn't receive light. As you can tell, this isn't physically based lighting anymore and that's okay since we don't care about that. So to finalize lighting, um, Valve likes to square this half Lambert value. I think the reason why we square at the very end is to see a stronger based exponential like difference in the shaded area. Let's talk about how we do grass displacement. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm using this formula right here used to calculate this displacement. Now let's talk about how this formula even works. 
Let's first, before even talking about the formula, let's talk about what's the easiest way to implement grass displacement. What is the most simple 3D shape to collide with vertices? I think it's spheres. So why? Because a sphere is just a single number when it comes to its size or collider, I guess you could say, which is basically just the radius. Using this, we can easily create a sphere-based grass displacement. So let's say the radius of our sphere as well from here on onward is one for the sake of, our, of, of simplicity. So now we need the direction of the grass from the sphere. That means we basically just need a vector going from the sphere's position to the grass's vertices. So how do we do this? It's very simple by just doing a minus between the two and that's literally it. So now that we have a direction of displacement going from the sphere origin to the grass vertex, we'll be using this to point um, the grass essentially away from the sphere. Plugging this in should give you that result, and with this done, we now need a way. And with this done, we now need a way to displace only the grass within the radius of the sphere and leave all other grass alone that is outside of our sphere's radius. So, how do we do this? Let's first just always add a normalized version of that direction displacement to the grass's vertices. So, we'll talk about why it's normalized later, but for now, let's multiply it by a push value that ranges from zero to one. If this push value is zero, assume the grass direction is, let's say, let's say it's one, one, and the push value is zero. We multiply the two, to two together, we get zero, zero, thus not moving the grass. Else, if the push value is one, then the vector 1, 1 times 1 is 1, 1. Then this, in theory, should push the grass with full strength. So how do we get this push value? Well, we do the simple formula here, which is just, let's think about it as a clamped displacement. So this is basically our push value. So what's going on here? We first see the length of the vector that is going from the sphere's position to the vertex position and we then scale this by the length proportional to the radius. So, what does this mean? If the radius is one and the length is seven, means seven is far shit and it's really far, that means we don't want that vertex for that grass at length seven to be affected. So, doing this will give you a value of seven, seven divided by one is seven, seven is over the radius, thus is out of bounds, and since seven is out of bounds, we will saturate or clamp this value to a range of zero to one. And now the final value is one. And then one will be used as our push force, or is it? Currently I said that if our push value is one and our grass vertex direction is at one, one, multiplying the two should give you one, one, which means we are going to push the grass now. I did say that the length 7 is far and should not affect the grass. If our length is 7 and the length is too far, means we shouldn't push. A simple fix for this is just to inverse this push value by doing 1 minus the push force, which equals to 0. And in this case, multiplying 0 by 1, 1 should give you 0. And what does 0 mean? 0 is nothing and will essentially cause the grass not to move and stay in place while doing other wind calculation. I hope that makes sense. But this is basically grass displacement. And this is the first time I have ever done anything that is related to um, interaction when it comes to shaders. What I mean by that is like an, another object moving something within my shader. So that was really cool and I learned a lot and I loved it. So in conclusion, if you guys watched this whole video, I just really want to thank you because it's the first video where I actually put some form of like proper preparation. Um, I usually just practice and learn shaders in my free time. I'll hopefully be uploading more videos like this if this does fairly decent, but I'll just probably do it out of just pure passion. Thanks, thanks a lot for watching, I guess. So if you guys have any maybe suggestions for my next video, what shader topic should I tackle? Or maybe I'll try to explain. You could also just suggest that in the comments. Also subscribe as well and like the video to just support the channel. And yeah, that's basically it. Bye guys.